hello welcome to uh, less this lesson on fluid dynamics okay so um, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet kindly subscribe for more videos in this video we'll go through the two types of paraviscous flow and probably the combination of the two of them okay so if i have a poison flow like the first one what do we mean by poison flow if i have a cold flow what do we mean by cold flow and then the combination of the two of them okay all right so let's start with the poison flow and you would understand so what is a poison flow he said in this flow pressure driven okay it is caused by okay it is caused by this pressure driven okay pressure drives the flow so this occurs when the plate is at rest okay so when the plates that we were dealing with the last in our last discussion when this is at rest okay when this plate is um at rest and there's a fluid going through them like that when it is at, at rest there's a pressure that is being caused okay at the surfaces of the um, the plates and this drives the flow okay and since the, the plates are at rest at the maximum height where we have our ym okay and then um, the least or the ground height is what zero y equals zero okay but at the maximum height we have y is equal to y y max at that point the velocity is zero because we are seeing the plates are at rest and then you're also seeing that since it is being caused by pressure driven uh pressure gradient where we discussed the other time the p the x is not equal to zero okay then if this happens then what are we trying to say what can we derive from this okay from the previous discussion we had we said that for this type of flow okay for this type of flow let me erase this part and write it there we said there's a relationship between the pressure gradients and um, the um, what do you call it um, the shear stress okay so we said we have dt or the t dy should always be equal to dp dx the pressure gradient and then we take it from here and derive our necessary con co um, equations okay now with the conditions that we use you see this is this was used in our last discussion and um, since y equals zero the velocity at the rest or the starting point meaning the lower plate this side okay will also be zero and these conditions we term them as what the no slip conditions okay so it means that if you pass through the same derivation or this process to find our equation for the velocity i'm sorry the fluid velocity and then the fluid shear stress we'll still come back and get the same derivations we had in our previous discussion okay so let's go and watch about um, that all right so we discussed that this is what you get okay i just explained this that always this equation here at the top here this one is always true okay and with that we know this that tau is equal to mu du dy from the newton's law of viscosity okay we discussed this in our last two um lessons or so yeah and from there we use the no slip conditions where the velocity at the y max is zero and the velocity at the y minimum that is the zero point was also zero and then we came to a conclusion that this will be our velocity equation that u of y is equal to 1 over 2 mu dp dx times the expression y square minus y m y and this was our equation and then we use this um, relation that tau is equal to okay the relation with this one with the tau is equal to mu du dy so we differentiated this one the velocity with respect to y and we have this for our tau okay it's from our last discussion that we had so we can also go through that one and then see the derivation and then we said a discharge which is which is equal to 
the relation for this charge we said is the q is equal to u the a where the a is the dimension in which we are the relo uh, sorry the fluid is flowing and dimension we said this is in just one dimension that is the y okay so we count the y and we use this to integrate both sides we integrated both sides and we had our uh, expression like this one for the discharge okay this is the expression we have for the discharge okay and with that we said the limits for integration is from zero to y max because we are just integrating over the y okay now we came to the u max which occurs at y m max over 2 we said u must occur at y m divided by 2 and we use that as well to find our u mass since we, we know u we just put y m over 2 in place of the u equation this one and we had our u max to be this the derivation for the Poisson flow and then the normal prior visual flow is the same because our assumptions for the prior visual flow is the same as the Poisson flow okay and then the u mean so we went through a process that the u mean is equal to uh, k over y max okay and we, d we derived this nice expression here that you see this one for it and also the u u mean and u max the relationship okay we divided them and this is what we had okay. so i hope this is okay these equations are very important because after this lesson we we'll take three questions each one on them and then we'll discuss about how to solve them okay all right let's move on so about the coherent flow now we are saying that this flow is being caused by wall velocity driven meaning this side okay wall velocity driven it means that it occurs as a result of the shear stress tau now this one is like this i have the plates okay let's say there is another plate for me and then the fluid is moving through now as a result of the movements of the plate here causing the shear stress between the, the fluid particles and the surface of the plates it means that once the plate start moving there will be some movement or some initial velocity for the fluid okay so it means that at the bottom of the plates where we've not moved or at the lower part of the plates we know that u of y equals zero is zero that is at the lower part of the plate and then with this we are saying that since it is being caused by wall velocity driven i mean the walls of the um, the plates are moving moving the fluid at that point it means that the velocity the velocity for the fluids at the walls or at the y max is not zero and is equal to some velocity v okay some books uses you then with a um, an underlying sign or something like that but then let's use v here for simplification sake okay all right so with that we are saying that this is not caused by any pressure driven it means that our dp dx that is our pressure gradient is zero okay all right so with this idea let's go and then derive equations that we can get from this okay now these are the things we've said about the coherent flow okay if that is the case then it means the tau okay dy is actually equal to what zero since dp dx is zero here okay but tau is what tau is giving us this so i have d dy okay sorry d dy of mu du dy okay and this will give me what um, let me use the white pen for here this will give me um sorry here is supposed to be equal to zero and um, i'll have something like mu du d squared u dy squared is equal to zero okay i can actually divide through by mu 
I'll get the squared u dy squared is equal to still zero. Okay, because if I um, divide through by zero, sorry, divide through by mu, mu will cancel mu here at the left side, and zero over mu is also zero. Okay, so it means first integration I'll get du dy is equal to what? du dy is equal to some constant c1. You can integrate zero with respect to y, you get a constant. Okay. Now I come back to here. Let me write it at the top for you. Okay. So if I integrate again, I get u of y is equal to some constant c1 times y plus c2. I hope you get it. So this, the velocity equation is as simple as that. U of y is equal to c1y plus c2. Okay. All right. So let's come here and put our conditions in. If you remember. We stated the conditions after dividing, um, sorry, after defining our coherent flow. Okay, we stated the conditions here. Okay, so these conditions we are coming to use them. Okay, this and this one, this and this, we are coming to use them. Okay, all right, so we are saying that u of y max is equal to some velocity v and u of y minimum or y equals zero is equal to zero now let's put the second condition in and we get u of zero is equal to c1 times zero so we get zero wherever you see y you put zero so you get zero plus c2 and we are saying that this is equal to zero so i have zero is equal to sorry is equal to c2 now our velocity equation reduces to something like this um let me write it with a different plan u of y is now equal to um c2 is zero so i have c1 y okay but now i'm saying that the velocity at y max is also not zero but it's what some velocity v okay so let's look at that one and see if we can find our c1 Okay. All right. So I have u of y max, which is y m, is equal to some velocity v. This means that v is equal to c one y max. So my c one is equal to v over y m or y max. So now everything is set for us to write our velocity equation. Okay. Now, um, mind you, just put it in mind that the u of y has reduced to c1 times y. Okay. So we just pick that one and we put our equation in. All right. So our u of y is equal to c1y from this side. Okay then what is our c1 you know our c1 to be what then u of y is equal to c1 is this one so v over y max times y so this is a new derivation for our velocity okay when we are dealing with a coherent flow meaning that at that point the flow is being driven by vel over velocity and then the pressure gradient is zero okay all right so with this if i know velocity to be this let me write it somewhere and then find our um how do you call it shear stress and the rest okay all right let me erase some parts mm, okay so put it in mind that with a combination with this one as well we can find the um how do you call it the u mean u max and the rest okay so i hope after a cleaning this i'll write it again for you okay so that we derive the rest very easily like that now our u of y is now equal to v over y max times y 
but it is our uh, V of Y in coage flow. Now, what is our uh, tau, which is the shear stress? And we are seeing that from the Newton's law of viscosity, shear stress is given by this mu du dy. Okay, so we mean our tau is equal to mu times the differential of u with respect to y, and we have what v over y m. Very simple like that. Okay. Very very simple. Okay. So let's go to um our u max. U max here is equal to now we have um u max is equal to you say u max occurs at y m over two so i have v over y m then wherever i see y i put y m over two okay now with this this can take this off and i'll get something like v over two i hope you get it so um let me erase some part and write it clearly for you so we had v over two for uh, u max okay where the v is the velocity at y max okay now let's go through um other derivations as well what is the discharge okay we said this charge is equal to the integral of u dy okay with respect to fluid dynamics in um, a flow between two parallel plates this is what we we see the discharge is being given by okay so the discharge is equal to integral them from zero to y max okay uh u is what v over y m y dy now you should know clearly that our v over y m they are all numbers that will be given to us they are constants okay so constant i put it there i integrate y with respect to y as well so i integrate y i have what y squared over two then from zero to y m okay so i have v over y m then y squared i put zero in i'll get zero so i have to put just y m in and i'll get y m squared over two this will give me v y m over two i hope you get it Alright, so let's write the discharge clearly. You understood the process that we went through, so let's clean this and write the discharge for you. Alright. Now, knowing the discharge, I hope you can go through the process to write your um, you mean that is the v average velocity, okay, average fluid velocity. That is what we mean by the you mean. Now we see this is equal to um, the discharge is equal to v over 2 let me see y m like that okay now let's go to the u mean that is the average velocity and you say u mean is equal to let me use m here u mean for m sorry u m for u mean now you are saying that this is equal to q over y m from our first last discussion this is what we wrote so i have v over 2 y m all over y m and this will definitely cancel this now we left with what v over 2 okay so now let's erase that one too and then write it properly for it okay now i have you mean to be y v over 2 okay v over 2 that now what is the relationship between the u max and u mean okay you could see that for a coed flow u mean is equal to u max because this is the u mean was given as this v over 2 and u max was also given at what v over 2 they are both the same so for coed flow u mean is equal to u max this is very simple okay so you can go through this yourself just start from the basic understanding that d tau dy is always equal to dp dx okay and depending on the kind of flow you are dealing with um dp dx can be equal to zero or not okay
Okay, so when it is quartz, then you have this. When it is poison, like we discussed in our first slide, then it is not equal to zero. You have to go through the process we did in our previous discussion. Okay, in our last discussion, we, we went through that. All right, so let's go to another topic where where we have both poison quartz flow. So it means that in this flow, the flow of the fluid is being caused by both pressure and wall velocity driven. Wow, this is very tedious work. So now with this, if we remember, we said that the P, sorry, the tau, the um, Y is equal to the P, the X. And now with this both combined, the PDS is not equal to zero from here, and U of Y max is also not equal to zero. Okay, but if you remember, this is what we had in our first discussion that when the, the PDX is not equal to zero, you get U of Y is equal to 1 over 2 mu the PDX and Y squared minus. Um, no, let me let me write it well for you because it's not just minus yet. It depends on the condition. Y squared plus oh let me let me write it for C one plus C two. This is what we had. Yeah, something like this. Okay. So let's let's see. Okay, let's see. We go to our next uh, our next page and then derive our equations. Okay. Now with this, we've written this for us. Okay, very nicely like that. Now we are seeing that though, if you put tau is equal to this. So if I put tau into this equation, I'll get the squared u dy squared is equal to one over mu del p del x okay and i said if you go through the integration properly because the pds is a constant here it's not part of um the velocity okay so if you go through the derivation well you get u of y is equal to one over two mu del p del x or you can write say it anyhow you want once you understand that this is a pressure gradient we are okay with it c1 plus c2 okay so now with this we are seeing that always the velocity at the bottom that is u of zero or y equals zero is always equal to zero because we've not moved any distance okay y equals zero is equal to zero so u of zero will be equal to what putting y equals zero anywhere you see y okay i hope this is okay let's say um let me see let me see no no i think i think the equation is not correct okay so now with this equation stated we said if you go through the derivation where well you have u of y equals 1 over mu so 1 over 2 mu rather del p dx or you can say anyhow you want to say this y squared plus c1 y or something like that right c1 y plus c2 i hope you get it so this was our equation that we had for integrating this and then now the conditions are u of y equals zero is equal to zero for that one is always true but u of y equals y max is not equal to zero but equal to some velocity v and now it means that my u of y so we let's first put the second condition in u of zero is equal to putting zero in place of all these and we'll get what zero here plus zero plus c2 and this we are saying u of zero is zero so it means c2 um c2 is actually equal to zero here again so it means my 
the velocity will reduce okay the equation the length of the equation will reduce and let's reduce it and write it well okay that is why i'm erasing this part for you so that you understand now since c2 is zero since c2 is zero here we have our u of y being equal to one over two mu del p del x y squared plus c1 y now this is what i have here let's come and consider the second condition here y max u of y max equals v okay all right so let me erase this part and put it there okay going through the process to derive your u of y i hope you can do because we discussed it in our second you know our third lesson rather okay so you can check up check up on that and then derive it yourself now with u of y max you said this equal to some v now putting it here we have one over two mu del p del x okay del p del x let me erase this and write it well and y m squared plus c1 y m we are saying that this is not equal to zero but it's equal to what some v okay so now let's see it means v minus or well i can still divide through by y m since i have c1 attached to y m i have v over y m okay then minus i'm doing the linear equation very straight like that minus one over two mu dp dx y m is equal to c1 how this is very simple okay i just took the whole of this okay first you divide you by your y m and if i divide this by y m i'll get v over y m this over y m okay this will cancel this and the whole of this over y m the y m will take one of them out so it's simple like that okay then what you do is you take you all know how to solve um, linear equation you take the one over two mu dp dx y m to the v side so it becomes v over y m minus that and that will give us our c1 okay so we come and put our c1 in here and see what we'll get okay all right so let's see let's put our c1 in this is our c1 wow very very long like that so let me write c1 here c1 is equal to v over y m minus one over two mu dp dx y m okay now um um let, let's let's write it well for you u of y will be what wow this is very strong like that it's very very length um, long and it's lengthy as well so if you don't take your time you might not follow okay so u of y u of y here is now equal to one over two mu dp dx then y squared okay plus y into c1 is what v over y m minus one over two mu dp dx y m so this is our v wow it's very 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 long like that so um you can go ahead and simplify if you want but you can also leave it like this if you understand it like this okay 
so um let's try to simplify this if you simplify you get u of y okay let's see u of y let me use a white pen u of y is equal to um, there is this one over two mu one over two mu here i'm taking them out okay but remind, remember that okay let me write it first before taking them out okay one over two mu uh, two mu dp dx y squared plus vy vy over ym minus one over two mu dp dx y m y okay now this is equal to one over two mu dp dx out okay is that dp dx then bracket comes like that y squared minus y m y then plus v y over y m i hope you can see this so this is our u of y in terms of poison coed flow combine the two of them it's very lengthy like that yes let's let's keep it like that okay now let's erase some parts and write it clear there okay no know that um this is as a result of the combination of the two as in um pressure both pressure driven and then velocity driven wall velocity driven okay all right so my u of y my u of y okay is equal to one over let me write the one over two mu what is this all right one over two mu dp sorry dp dx then y square minus y m y plus v y over y m now um we are supposed to find our shear stress which is mu du dy okay so our shear stress tau is equal to mu du mu okay the um this shear stress formula is being given by the newton's law of viscosity always i mention it mu du dy this is equal to mu times the differential of u with respect to y now if i differentiate u with respect to y, i get one over two mu dp dx all these are constant and i differentiate the brackets i'll get two y minus y m okay m plus v over y m okay because when i differentiate v y with respect to v y over y m with respect to i get v over y m okay and this like the mean will multiply everything okay including the v over y m so tau is actually equal to one over two dp dx okay dp dx then you write a bracket as well okay um two y minus y m let me write this well y m then plus mu v over y m this is my tau wow very very long like that okay this is a constant the whole of this it's just a constant okay very simple like that you can represent it by a constant but then let's leave it like that now let's go to our discharge our u max and the rest okay so let's leave this as um, an assignment or something for you to derive in our next video 
I'll actually derive them, not derive, I'll actually write them down to use them for solutions to some practice exam practice question that we are about to solve. Okay, so let's go and find them. Um, uh, discharge uh, discharge okay which is equal to this from 0 to y m u dy okay you can find that and our u max okay occurs at u of y m over 2 okay just put this y m over 2 in place of u and then you find your u mass uh you mean okay is equal to q over y m and then you find the relationship between them okay actually what is really really important is for you to find your u of y and tau of y whenever you have these you can use the two of them or you can use your u of y to find the remaining um, other expressions